it's a really diverse school, wide range of children from all kinds of different backgrounds, local children, children from quite deprived homes. We have quite a few new arrivals who just arrive in Leeds. This part of Leeds is a big drop-off point, and a lot of them are housed here initially in some of the high-rise flats. Prepared, food, everything. Food and everything. Fantastic. Morning, boys. So we get lots of children who come here who have no English. Some of them have got very limited schooling and experience of school. So it's, it's very diverse. We have very simple rules in school and a, and a very clear ethos of we care, and that goes right across the board for everybody in school. The parents are delightful, they're very supportive of school. We find that some of them are very involved in school life, some of them uh, hang back and can be a little bit isolated. So, you know, we're very much trying to reach out to make them feel welcome and, and part of our community, really. We have a little patch of land which has been crammed with raised beds and, and allotment style areas um, so that we can plant a range of different types of vegetables and things for the children. So there's not a lot of space but a lot comes out of a very small space. This, what do you think it could be? What does it look like? Well done. It's just a flower starting. Again, that's another sign that our onion is ready to harvest. What do we think about the onions? Do you think they're nearly ready? Yes. OK, and what we're looking for, remember? What's flowers. This? Not, well, yeah, the flowers. Drooping down of the, the drooping stem. down of the stem. So what do you think, then? Which onion do you think is ready? That one. That's one. nearly ready. Well done. Any more? Um, We've helps. actually measured the whole of the garden area, so that brought in all the numeracy skills, um, measuring area, the perimeter, the size of the beds, etc. We have um, been teaching the teachers to, to obviously um, run sessions with the children. And then I visit at the moment every half term to work with small groups of children in the garden, so growing their own produce organically, of course. You should be a chef. Always good to try and wanting them to recognise which plants are actually growing in the garden and the key opportunities to harvesting time. What would you like to harvest first? Berries. berries. The berries. berries. OK, shall we get a bowl then? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we tried that. <laughs> nice. That's a Jamaican one. That's Their speaking and listening skills are developing all the time. They're absolutely engaged in what we're doing. They're learning skills for life here, uh, and hopefully the gardeners of the future. <laughs> a lot of them tell me they're actually gardening at home, so they'll do something with me in school. They'll do some seed sowing. So now they're not sort of phased by looking at a packet of seeds now. They're growing at home, actually bringing plants into school. That's uh, very exciting for me. For our children particularly, um, dishing a worksheet out to one of our children doesn't work. They need to see big pictures, sounds, somebody talking, somebody showing. They need to get their hands dirty. And the more of that we do, the more they will learn. So has anybody read this book before? Do we know the story? What is it, Lydiana? It's a caterpillar, but this caterpillar yeah. is a very, very hungry caterpillar. Can you tell Natniel hungry? Can you say hungry in Tigrinian? Hung hungry. Good. The little group that I was working with today, uh, they from Eritrea and they speak Tigrinian. Uh, one of the little boys is new to the country. He's been in school for just over a week. So, and the others have only been in the country since Easter last year, so they've picked up a lot of English. We often set up a buddy system, so like Binyam's been buddy to Natniel. Because the translating, it makes it easier for those that don't understand to understand, but equally important to keep giving them the English as well alongside. On Tuesday, he ate through two pairs. Binyam? One. No. How many pairs, Binyam? How many pairs? Two. Two. Two, two, two pairs. Two pairs. Two pairs. Good. Practical experience are very, very important for children. Um, all children, not necessarily children with English as a second language. Some of the children may never have seen those fruits before. And just to look at them in a book doesn't show the shape or the size. Children learn in different ways. Do you like strawberries, Natalie L? Say, I like strawberries. I like, I like strawberries. 
good boy. I like strawberries. I like strawberries. I, I like strawberries. There's lots of children that learn um, through touch, through smell, all their senses. So it's really, really important that they have those practical experiences. Butterfly. Butterfly. Good talking. People are very affected by how they see a school and it's important to us that people see us as a really positive part of the community. We decided it would be great both to share what was being taught to the children with some of our parents and to teach them some basic cookery on a budget. So we decided we would fund that ourselves. We would go out, seek parents who we thought would be interested, but also seek parents who were quiet, who didn't necessarily always engage with other parents and try and bring them in. So as well as the skills, it's also about bringing them together. We are hoping to teach you how we teach the children to cook at St Peter's, so that when we use the knife skills, that's not because we're saying what you are doing at home is wrong at all, but it's how we teach the children safely. The first recipe that we're doing today is Wednesday day of stuffed courgettes. Courgettes we're actually growing in the garden here at school, so that's quite a good one to use. So I'm just going to use the claw. Your children will all know very quickly what the bridge and claw are. The thing that we try to show as well with the children is just how easy cooking can be. My kids love it. They've done it before me, so my daughter brings stuff home and we try it together and then I might introduce it to the dinner because I do dinners at home. I do all cooking, so, yeah, kids love it. I'd say the cookery courses and the literacy and the numeracy keeps me up to date on what they're doing and how they're doing it as well. There we go. So they look very attractive, don't they? And then you... My daughter can be very fussy. So when I'll, if I've done something here, I'll take it home and try it. Um, yeah, she likes couscous because I, I did that here first time. And... So it just simply does that like that, nice and neat, and it doesn't go everywhere. And we want um, an oblong. Again, with the children, we talk about oblongs, rectangles. It's a great way of doing maths with the children with the cooking that we do. This gives a real picture of what a school should be like. Like, uh, it involves all the parents uh, and it really drags them into something concrete to be done for the school, for the children and for the community as a whole. And that is something very nice. I just love the mixture of the ground arms in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. I think if the children feel part of a school and they have got that lovely community feel, they will go out, they will talk about it, they will see that as a positive experience and that will influence the way other people see the school. A lot of people are isolated in the community and so to bring them in and make them feel part of our community benefits them but actually it benefits us. I started teaching one child, then all the others saw, and they said, can we come to Knitting Club too? And it's grown within the matter of two to three months from just the one child to at least 22, which is as many as I can cope with. I've had to call upon help, so I've got four um, elderly ladies who are still very sprightly and want to come over, but they're in their 80s and 90s from the flats behind the school, and they come in and help me at, at lunchtime, and uh, we're all knitting away and chatting away, so it's knitting and nuttering. <laughs> well, I just thought it'd be nice to help them out, you know, and when they asked for volunteers, and I thought, well, right, I'll come and do it, like, you know. I find it interesting, you know, they're, they're very willing to, to learn how to do different things, you know, and they're all nice children. It's really nice, cos, like, she knows all about knitting. <laughs> well, I'm on my own a lot. I only get out about two or three days a week, and I thought it'd be, if I could pass some skills on to the younger ones, cos a lot of them don't seem to know how to knit these days. We've got some children who've come from Angola and they've come from Angola via Portugal and apparently in Portugal everybody knits, so they don't see it as anything strange. So they, uh, men knit, boys knit, girls knit, old ladies, young ladies. So I think they're too young to have any preconceived sexist or ageist ideas about it and they just want to get on and do it. Things like PSHCA, discussions come out of doing things together. Betty, Mary and Dorothy are some of the people that help us make this way for our dog blanket. And Marilyn. And Marilyn. Just sitting side by side, talking, is what they want to do. And therefore, they're actually speaking and listening at a level that we don't do in the classroom either. It's enjoyable. And when you're angry at somebody or something, you just sit down and knit and it relaxes you. 
One, one day when they, we were sat having lunch, we heard the children say, oh, the grandmas are here again. <laughs> it's nice to feel wanted, right. really, at our age, you know? Right, thank you. Thank you very much, thank you. I'll tell you, you see. Right. Thank you. you don't get all this fuss at home. Lots of kisses. If I were to say to you, can you remember your school trips, you would be able to remember all of them, wouldn't you? What you did, what you learned, what it was like. Um, and it's not just about the little bit of, of knowledge that the children might be gaining, it's about touching things, smelling things, being in a different environment. For children to go and do that, the amount of learning that takes place just incidentally, beyond the learning that you expect, is fantastic. Take parents with you and model the kind of learning that you can promote through a trip. Again, gives them a fantastic experience of the types of questions you can ask, the types of activities you can do with the children, the way to speak to them, the way to ask open-ended questions and so on. So you're educating the children, you're educating the parents. Do you want to actually try and stroke them? Aren't they amazing? Because it's not soft hair like your hair, is it? It's really bristly. Have you seen his feet? Have a look at the bottom of his legs and you can see that he's actually just walking on two toes. I think the greatest benefit that a place like Temple Newsom has is that you really can get out and see things you can't see in the classroom. You can get out and experience how life grows right from the tiny, tiny children that we get. We'll get them just handling the pigs, handling the chickens, having a look at things. From that, you can get them into key stage one where you're actually learning about the differentiation between species and varieties of things. And it just adds so much to their understanding of the world around them. I think it's, it's good for the kids and, you know, just for interacting, you know, between themselves and parents come out together as well. You know, when you go to the shops, you sort of bump into them, but you, you don't have time to talk to them. But probably, you know, trips like this probably give you a chance, you know, to say hello and you know, this is good. I like, I just like watching the kids, like, interact with each other, um, learning about new animals, because Shalia loves animals, so it was just nice to see her. Get him. What was she feeding? Uh, some piggies. She loves, you know, learning about different animals and what sounds they make and learning not just about different animals, she's also been learning about planting things, you know, seeds and how things grow, so yeah. It's a fantastic opportunity to get that sense of, wow, isn't this amazing? You bet. Come and have a go. I'd like to build on all the fantastic things that are happening so that it's not just a place for children, it's a place for everybody.